wonderful things so that uh, they won't uh, interfere with our live streaming at this time. All right. I'd like to read a passage of scripture and then we'll pray and uh, Tay Jefferson will come and acknowledge the cards and We'll go from there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his way. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice then when I call, O oh Lord. 
Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. And I will wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Spirit of the living God, we just thank you now for your tender, loving mercies. And by your spirit now, we ask that you would comfort, strengthen, and keep as only you are able. We know, O oh God, that these times, they come to the all, and none are exempt. But we know that in the midst of it all, you are our light and our salvation. You strengthen and you keep us, you enable us to go forward. And we thank you, God, that even as this next chapter of life is turning, we thank you for revelation knowledge, for insight as we continue to worship, to praise, we lift your name on high. And we say thanksgiving and praises unto thee, O oh God, who are my light and my salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I'm going to ask Tay Jefferson to come and she's going to acknowledge some of the cards that we have. And I do see Minister, a man of God, our friend Gary, who is going to have a couple of things to say as well. And then we'll come back and share the word with you. Amen. All right, come. Here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Time is God's gift. We all need a time to breathe, quiet time for reflection, to sift through memories and come to grips with what has happened. We all need time for tears, not for the ones who is now at peace with God in heaven, but for ourselves as we realize that things will never be the same. We all need time to just be, when we can feel the comfort and reassurance that God's everlasting love brings to heal our hearts. Praying God's peace and comfort for you and your loss, Pastor Paula Leonard. Sometimes things seem easier when you know that people care. I hope you have everything you need to soothe your spirit, quiet your mind, and bring you peace. I hope you know how many people care so deeply about you, and I'm one of them. Patricia Marshall. If only I could wish away your every pain, your every hardship, every challenge, that you are facing. It would be my wish that these caring thoughts and words of support could make everything immediately better. Just know that I believe in you and I'm hoping the kind of brighter days you deserve are ahead. Until then, I'm certain your strength will carry you through. It. It's hard to know what to say at this time like this but no, I care in that you're in my thoughts and you're not alone. From Patty, Justin, and Casey. Mr. Willie and Charles James, peace and blessings be unto you and your family. I wish that I could be there with you today to celebrate the life of my friend, Minister Jerry James. I could not let this joyous event take place without sending a note of love and admiration for Geraldine, AKA Jerry. I admired her for her strength of character and her faith in God. She was a light to everyone that knew her. That knew her. She was a true prayer warrior and took up her mantle to fight the good fight without any fear or intimidation. She has helped many get through battles and with spoils. She was also loving and kind, something that we all could learn more from her example. May we feel God's grace and mercy, knowing that she is now in glory with our Heavenly Father and that you are not alone in this journey. 
I thank God every time that I remember you. Philippians 1 and 3. I remember the times when Jerry would just call unexpectedly and say, what, what is it? What's going on? You have backup. Let's fight together. In addition, we would ward until the devil got tired. <laughs> on several occasions, she would call and we would talk for hours about what God revealed to her and would encourage each other in Christ. We would stand in faith and in agreement for our hopes, dreams, and aspirations and would rejoice together when they came to, the, to fruition. She was and still is a friend indeed. Therefore, every time that I remember my friend, I see a beautiful soul who is waiting on the other side for our joyful reunion. You and your family are in our prayers during this season. Love always, Pastor Valerie Moses. Mr. Willie and Charles James, I'm praying that God will grant you the strength you need to face this occasion and that he will give you comfort and healing during this difficult time. Jerry is an awesome woman of God, and we will see her again. Because he lives, we will live also. John 14 and 19. Love, Mother Walters. On behalf of Willie James and Word Up Ministries family, we acknowledge all your cards, gifts, and prayers, and well wishes. We wish to thank everyone for your love and support. Please continue to keep our family in your prayers. So at this time, we also want to acknowledge the fact that it is the celebration. And and Jerry just had some funny ways about her. And she and I, we were hit buddies, we would go, which I'll get into that a little later on to share some of the things. And as, as um, we prepare to go into the word of God, you know, I, I can't help but think about the song that Jerry wrote for those two women, War Until the Devil Gets Tired. And we would just play it, you know, for our girls to win the meetings. And it, it just says a whole lot about her spirit. And, you know, I know maybe physically she's gone, but I still feel mm -hmm. her spirit. And, and I thank God for that. And what a blessing we had the opportunity to know her for the time that we did. And it always seems like too soon or too short. But you know what? I'm learning to thank God for what we do have. Praise God. And that he allowed us the opportunity. I want to take a moment now, a longtime friend of the family, oh my goodness, just he has never missed anything, just supportive and prayerful, wonderful man of God. Brother Gary Cook has always been in our lives for everything. And uh, when he texted and said, you know, I wanted to get back to him, but just doing so many things, I didn't really get back to him, but I'm so glad to see you here. And, and we would just be honored if you would come and share very, very long time ago, my life changed. I met Mr. James and Mrs. James, the parents, the lovely parents of the James family. Uh, my dad looked at me and said, Mr. James is a man of conviction. We may not agree with everything he's convicted to, but we have to respect his convictions. And when he came to my home and checked us out, I believe he said, the Cuccarellos were okay. And that's a very big deal to me. From that point on, yes, it's true that my life did change by knowing the amazing, legendary James family, all of them. Some of them died too soon. I'm not going to go into all the names because it'll be a little bit self-fulfilling and that's not necessary for today. But I will say this about Jerry. One time she called me on the telephone and called me out about a brief prayer. She wanted to make sure that my prayer was in order. And I have to love her for that. And I, she checked me. And <clears throat> I, I have to love that. 
because it proved to me that she was paying attention to the details. And how many of us are guilty of not paying attention to the details? Because life just, it just, it, it's one big distraction. We can all agree on that, at the very least. And God bless her, because I took it as the, the most cute, first of all, she deemed me worthy of being corrected, and she just misheard something I said, it was really nothing. But I, I appreciated that, and I, I'll never forget that. So there is a, a test which became a testimony. Uh, she didn't know it at the time, but her and Willie came into my music store. I think he used to come in all the time. But during this time was a very, very dark, very dark time for me. I had very deep depression, and I had thoughts that were not godly and not healthy. And what she, for whatever reason, her and Willie left this very old, worn out cassette of Donnie McClurkin. I'm using Donnie's name, but it could have been anybody. It happened to be Donnie McClurkin. And if anybody doesn't know who Donnie McClurkin is, <laughs> he's a man with his own challenges lately. But I can tell you, he's an amazing songwriter. Yeah. And there was one particular song. I won't even say it by name because it's personal. But I can tell you, it got me off of the ground and it made me stand. And that song did stand uh, for something. And it helped me through. And there would be times I would go to my music store at 2.30 in the morning and I would go there and play it. Sometimes more than a few times and, and, and weep and, and pray and if anybody knows anything about depression, it doesn't, you don't really know it's happening, and then it happens, and then you're trapped, and then you can't get better sometimes. So for me, I refused any kind of medical treatment, and of course the Holy Spirit told me to walk on the beach, smell things, taste things, and get my senses back in order, and get myself back in order. And a couple of years later, I was back in order. And uh, my testimony is a personal story. I encourage everybody here today, uh, use whatever testimony you have as a form of sharing with others. It, I, I believe it's, it's a requirement. I believe it's necessary. And as you share your testimony, it lives. It's a living thing right now. I'm thanking Jerry, and I know she is aware or will be aware that she helped me and redirected me. And, and of course, I can't mention Jerry without Willie because they were a team. And I can honestly say from the bottom of my heart, I can never, ever repay that. It's impossible. I can only pray that someday I will see her face to face and hug her and thank her in heaven. Amen. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank Thank you so you much. And you, you said you, you relate to everything that you said. I believe that. Lisa, are you ready? And yes, um, just everyone know you're not going to see, but you will be able to hear, okay? And this is coming from your son. Are you able to pick up the phone? Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Charles James, some who don't know. Um, I, you see my family in the background. Uh, we wanted to be there today for my mom's funeral. Uh, well, celebration of life is really what it is, but our vehicle kind of let us down. You know, so we're coming in from Memphis. But um, one thing I can say about my mom was she was, yes, an awesome, awesome, fierce woman of God. And I never, there was never a time where I could not, talk to my mother about anything that was going on in my life. Um, 
when I told her about, you know, getting married, you know, she was super excited about meeting the new family and what have you. Um, but the one thing I can, the, the one thing about my mom, she was really, really funny. Okay. Um, I mean, when she gets outside of you know, the, the spiritual walk, which well, not like always outside, but you know, she was really funny. She had a really goofy side that me and dad got to see. Um, like one example, <laughs> Super Bowl 35, I was <laughs> 16. And back then I was into this whole model railroading thing. And I needed a roll of electrical tape and I had to go out my room into the bed and into their di into the dining room to get this roll of tape. And I walk out my room and there's mom talking to a cup and a saucer, telling it to go into the kitchen, wash themselves, dry themselves, put themselves away and what have you. <laughs> and of course, dad, he sees me walk out. Hey, a little, a little off there, <laughs> you know, that kind of a thing. And I said, Mom, what are you doing? She wheels around. She sees me standing there. And she's like, oh, my goodness. Uh, no, Charles, it's not, what you, it's, it's, it's not what you think. Your dad did it, too. And, of course, my dad. Really? Charles, would you believe that a man of my stature would do such a thing? <laughs> Look, guys, I just come out here for a roll of electrical tape. Let me just go back in my room. Let's try this again. Anyway, long story short, Mom, she was just that type of goofy you know, funny type. And that memory is just, that's like one of the biggest memories that I have of my mom outside of her spiritual walk. She was always praying for me, praying for our family, you know, for everyone. Even when I was in the military, you know, I mean, I couldn't tell her about some of the things that I was doing, but yet she was still, still praying, you know, and I do believe that a lot of what I did in the military, traveling these highways and byways for over 20 years, over road truck driver, it was her prayers that definitely kept me safe. You know, and her communing with God, me communing with God, my dad communing with God, we all were covered. We're all covered by the blood. And mom absolutely made sure of it, you know. So, I mean, I know everybody will look at this as like a like kind of like a sad time, but I, it is sad because no, I won't be able to talk to my mom like I want to. I will call her, you know, every so often. Hey, mom, what you doing? How's everything? You doing all right? You know, how's you and dad? You know, what have you? But. Can't really do that no more, but I know where mom is. I know exactly what she's doing right now. And she's doing exactly what she did down here. Praise God. Gave him all the glory, all the praise, covered us and the family. I know that's exactly what she's doing up there. She's up in heaven at the right hand of God doing what she did here. You know, so I take great comfort in that. And we all should. We all knew how mom was. We all knew how mom did. And she going to continue to do so. She going to continue to. So, but uh, in any case, um, mom, yes, mom was just an awesome, awesome woman of God. And yes, I know she will be missed. But we will all see her again. We will, we will all see her again. So with that, um, God bless everyone. Thank you for all of the love and prayers and condolences. But uh, mom's good. Mom is good now. She's more than good. She's with the Lord at his right hand now. And I think we all can take comfort in that. So y'all take it easy. Thank you for having me here in this capacity. And I hope to see y'all soon. Take care. Love y'all. Bye.
Scott James, and I call him Nephew Charlie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we thank God for him. We're sorry he couldn't make it. Uh, technology seems to be kind of filling in a lot of spaces these days, isn't it? Yes, it do. I want to take a moment and acknowledge Minister Mike uh, S. And I also see Minister Janice Fleshy in the back. Say hello to see you. And our very own nephew, Brandon, all the way from oh, D.C., right? Brandon, thank you, Lord God. We want to make a trip for you. And all of the guests who come. Uh, yes. <laughs> and everyone who, who has come out to uh, just support, you know, the family at this time. Again, very difficult time. We're not used to having to be so spaced apart and faces covered and, you know, can't hug and all those things. But you know what? Within our hearts, th th and that's really where it counts, isn't it? It's from the inside. And I think God is just teaching us something uh, more that we don't want to miss during this time, this season that we're in. I think God is showing us how to work from the inside out rather than from the outside in. It, it's just kind of a new lesson, uh, but it's really old. It's always been. And so uh, I, I was thinking on, on early on, we always said that Minister Jerry was one of the founders. She was right at the beginning helping with the ministry when we started. And, you know, when you, you first get into ministry, you're just gung-ho, you're fearless. And I remember we were going back and forth to Asbury Park because we had met some people there and we were working there and uh, doing outreach and just, you know, just trying, we were just going to save the world, okay? <laughs> and um, someone had took us to these projects, that's what they call them. And, um, you know, we had been going in and out of there and God just blessed us. We were getting food and we just feed some of it. Actually, that was during the AIDS crisis. And some of you might remember that. And it was just a very difficult time as well. But we just felt like this was what God wanted us to do. And, you know, we had quite a few people with us at first. But then kind of, you know, things kind of dwindled down and people not as excited as they were. And uh, I knew there was a family there and I really needed to get back to them because the, the young man was very sick. And they just knew he wasn't going to last much longer. And they called and said, well, you think you can get out here today? I said, of course. And um, I couldn't get there until that evening, though. And, you know, I think it was like during the fall, so it get a little dark a little earlier. And so I remember I was talking to Jerry on the phone. And I told her, well, I got to hurry up because I got to get out. Got to go out to Asbury. I got to get to the project to see them. And she stopped saying, I know you ain't going to the projects by yourself. <laughs> and I said, um said, no, you're going to go with me. <laughs> and she just kind of laughed and said, okay. And the next thing we know, we were there, did what we had to do, and came back. And this is the kind of person she was. She, she was dropping a hat, spur the moment, let's go do it, and be done, and so on. And that's exactly what we did. And I appreciated that so much about it. She didn't ask no questions, you know, and this was, and, and she was working then at that time, okay, and working full time. And, and everywhere I went, it's like she wanted to be there. I remember her coming to my home early in the morning on Saturday mornings. <laughs> and that's when we had started learning spiritual warfare. And she says, I know you know something different. And I'm going to learn everything you know. <laughs> and she made it a point she would, she would be there on her days off. And this was a person who loved God. And she wanted as much as she could get. And that I appreciate so much about her. I'm, I'm going to just read a couple of scriptures because... As we begin to believe on the word of God, it's the only thing that's going to give us the comfort that we need. We can't look to people for what only God can do. And it's during these times, you know, I was talking to my brother and he says, I know God is with me. He had to be with me. God is bringing me through this. And I said, that, that's, that's the only way we get through these things. You know, when you know the Lord and have a relationship, we're not talking religion here, you know, because... People have made Christianity a religion. God is too big for religion. He won't fit in anybody's religion. He's all about relationship. He wants to know you personally. And he wants to really have that kind of fellowship and commune that began in the garden. And so as we learn more about our God and realize, you know, this is between me and my Lord. And this is how we get through life. We were teaching a series on your book of life and learning what's already been written of us and how we're really just fulfilling what's already been written. And what we need to do is just simply trust, even when we can't see. Everybody's faith is being trust tested right now. We are all being tested for what we believe. And I've always said, and we were just saying it earlier, faith 
that can't be tested can't be trusted. So we have to get through these times knowing that God is bigger than anything that we can go through. And they've really got people in fear with this whole COVID thing. Uh, COVID's not bigger than God. And the more we look to him and trust in him, the better we're going to be and continue in our assignments. Because you're not here, you know, by coincidence. Isn't it amazing that your birthday is evidence, proof, that God needed you here for now? That you were not at another time, at another dispensation, at another century or another. You know, some say, I would have loved to live when Jesus was walking. Well, that's nice, but you're here now. <laughs> and since we're already here, we may as well make an impact. Leave influence on someone. Jerry had influence, and she left her influence, that's for sure, in a wonderful way, in a funny way, in a serious way. And we appreciate all those ways because everybody has so much in them. And the more we start to discover what's been really put in us, because we don't understand, you have the powerful, one of the most powerful gifts that has ever entered the earth. That's why there's no two people that have even the same fingerprints because you're so unique and so different in who you are. And God loves who he made you to be. And he wants you to love who he made you to be. Because the more you love it, the more you're gonna be who you are. And you won't allow people to determine who you should be and what you should do. Because you have a relationship. Yes, we're gonna always have those relationships and different things that's around us and people from time to time. But we have to have that relationship that counts. And that's what really counts. And so I'll finish it up like this because most people don't realize, Mr. Jerry, as each and every one of us are, your spirit. Thessalonians says it this way. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23 says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y, completely. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? He's making it very clear that we have a spirit, <clears throat> we have a soul, our psychic, our intellect, our will, our mind, and we live in this body. Now to understand that you have to realize the real you is a spirit. If your spirit was to you know, be presented in a way it would look like you, only better, that's what I say. And your spirit is the real life, the real part of who you really are. This is why it's dangerous to think you know people. <laughs> you know their body, their outer, that house or the temple or the tabernacle that they live in. But to know them, only God does. And when he has that relationship with them, that's what makes them who they are. God is what makes you who you are, not people, not any of the things that we strive after to try and think that that's gonna make our life better. James puts it like this, the body without the spirit is dead. So when the spirit leaves the body, it is really the body now that most of us look on and we weep and we even some go to the cemeteries and visit from time to time, but the truth is they're not there. This is why it's called the remains, because the real person has gone, they've soared. Oh, okay, we need a scripture for that. Ecclesiastics chapter 12 and verse seven says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So when you are born again, it's not, it has nothing to do with religion. Born again says, when I leave this body, my spirit returns to God who gave it. We're a spirit. We have a soul. We just live in this body. Three-dimensional, created in the likeness of God. God the Father, manifested through Jesus Christ, his Son, forever present in the Holy Spirit. Three, but still one. That kind of narrows it down that if, 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 if we can be three and still one, shouldn't be so hard for him to be three and still one. 
We're in his image. We're in his likeness. And he has gifted you with something so powerful. And a lot of your trials and testing will be not so much as he's after you, but your adversary is after your gifting. This is why you have to guard. Guard yourself. Know that there's something greater in you or you wouldn't be going through a lot of things that you have to go through. And I say this, just to kind of wrap it up now. It says, we are at home in the body. It says 2 Corinthians 5, 6 and 8. It says, we're at home in the body. When we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. Absent from the body, when we leave the body, is to be present with the Lord. And so it is true then that we understand our triune and how we've been created. And we also understand that when the spirit leaves the body, it immediately goes into the realm of glory. And when we think about it, it's just majestic. It's amazing. The creation is all that, and we're still trying to understand it. But as long as you know it, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to understand it. Luke 23 and 43, just to sum it up, we look at the cross and we just, not so long ago, passed through Easter, Resurrection Sunday. And we see Jesus on the cross. Two thieves are nailed beside him. You all know the story. And one says, if you're God, why don't you, you know, save us, save yourself. Let's all be saved. But it wasn't that way at all. But the other thief said, Lord, remember me when you come into your glory, your kingdom, your paradise. And what did Jesus say? He didn't say that, well, after you sleep in your grave for a few centuries or after. No, he said this day. Why? Because that thief is going to be leaving this earth on that day. So it was proof that when your spirit leaves your body, no, you're not asleep in your grave, you know, as many have tried to describe. You know, the spirit is very clear in terms of the teaching if we would just leave. But no, you immediately go and you go to reward. And no, they're not just walking around heaven all day and floating on clouds and things, like, but they are actually actively performing. They are continuing their purpose their destinies that were ordained for their life. What they didn't finish out here, they will finish there because heaven is in preparation, glory to God, for the Lamb's Supper, the bridegroom, when the Lord will return from heaven with the shout. And some think that it's fantasy and that it's not real. But like I said, I'd rather believe it and be ready when it comes than not believe it and miss it because that day will come and we'll all be caught up according to the scriptures. You know, we will be, we'll be caught up even so. It says them which also, it says, listen, even those that were asleep, now what's he talking about? The body, our bodies will be, it's what we call the rapture. Many don't believe that. But when it takes place, he says the graves, he showed a preview of that during the resurrection. When he resurrected, the Bible says graves opened up and they were all, all of these were previews of what's to come and it will happen again. So my thing to you, people of God, know, don't, you know, question or think about, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are not about a religion. It's called the kingdom of God. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. And the kingdom, religion deals with membership. Kingdom deals with citizenship because citizenship survives and it brings you into the, as heirs of salvation. And the wonderful thing about kingdom citizenship, it's open 24 seven. At any given time, you can say, Lord, I wanna be in your kingdom. I wanna be a citizen. I'm not about religion and living one day one way and not only another day. And he will simply say, well, then welcome to the kingdom. Come on in. We've been waiting for you.
I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to get ready to pray and let you go. We said we wouldn't be long. Uh, even went a little longer than I thought it would. But I thought it's necessary because as we celebrate Minister Geraldine, we will see her again. And we will celebrate in the kingdom of the Lord, just as he has planned it to. God has really good plans for our lives. And it's good if we would just have the expectation of looking forward now and knowing that what's before you is far greater now than what's behind you. And when that chapter, that last chapter, that page is turned, it's time to step in to the next chapter of life. Spirit of living God, we thank you now for those that so graciously came and gathered here today to honor and celebrate this woman of God's life. But Lord, we know that we can't preach anyone's funeral or anyone's homecoming. Their life has already lived that. But it's really for those that we might have closure and have those final goodbyes, but also the opportunity to make sure that it is well with our soul. And so we just say that within your heart, if you simply want to be sure, it's so simple. Romans says, if you just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus, who died, forgave you of your sins, rose again. It's so simple. You shall be saved. It says, for your own words and your own mouth, you bring salvation. It's nigh even in your mouth. And so if you haven't done that, if you would just say with me, Lord Jesus, I ask you into my heart. I believe you've forgiven me of my sins. I receive that forgiveness. And I thank you that this day, I receive salvation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. That ends at this point, and we are going to just continue to pray much for the family. And again, thank you, each and every one, on behalf of the family and, and all that were, you know, even couldn't come. We, we thank many of the cards and different ones who wanted to come and could not. And we want to say from the family, thank you so much for your well wishes and all your cards and even the texts and the different things that we receive, we appreciate your love and your concern. And again, we just say continue to pray for the family that God strengthen and keep as only he's able in Jesus' name. At this time, it brings to an end. And again, we say thank you. Uh, we do have to remember you about just social distancing. We just have to keep up with, you know, the instructions that are given to us. You can always do that little bump thing, okay? <laughs> All right, God bless you. All right, and we dismiss you at this time. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And the Lord strengthen you and give you peace. God bless you.